So number two is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. How do you feel about that as a title? That's fair, yeah. I get that. I like that. Because the thing about The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is that it's it's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible commentary. <laughs> Incredible. What I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Once upon a time... In a faraway land, two podcasters went about to discover the true favourites of every being in the kingdom. Now, we join our intrepid young adventurers, hosts Harold and Lucas, as they discuss their favourite book titles. <laughs> this is just a CBeebies intro now. As you say, do, do I need to add in, like, sparkles yeah, and like, magical need... sound effects? And... Book, book <laughs> opening noises. Yeah. As you <laughs> Why like. is the book so creaky? <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a wooden book with metal joints that need oiling. Um, and you're opening it up and we're starting the show. It's weird that we're starting a podcast episode about book titles discussing opening a book. By opening the book, because you don't need to open it to get the title. Usually. We are literally judging books by their cover in are, this episode. Are we, though, is the thing. I was thinking about this. Why are we going to do favourite book cover? Well, no, because like, because the thing is, I I was thinking about this, and like, because a book title and a, a book cover, you need to judge the book by its title. Like, that's an imp- that's part of the book. Whereas the cover is an entirely different medium. It's art. It's it's illustration. It's it's irrelevant to the story. Whereas the title isn't irrelevant. The title is like what informs your judgment. I've always took the phrase "Don't judge a book by its cover" to not necessarily only include the artwork on the cover, though. What, what you like? Like you, I like the blurb as well. But I, but no, but you should. I, I think you should judge it. The by book it, title was on there too. Yeah, you should judge it by. These I things. think you should judge books by their cover too. Yeah, it's an important part of making a book. To be fair, I, I also do. I will wander around Waterstones judging books by their covers. Actually, no one... to friends often, I will be like, "Look at this yeah. shit cover." <laughs> I'll be like, "That's a sick cover." I mean, that's the that's the thing, right? If you've got a good title, that can really. Every book I've ever picked up on a whim has been like something where I'm like, "Oh, that's, that's that looks an interesting. interesting title." Yeah, or, like the cover's nice. <laughs> exactly, because what else is going to draw you in? I think that yeah, I've got a book right here, the one that I picked up to do some foley work earlier, and Harry yelled at me. <laughs> um, it's called <laughs> "People from My Neighborhood" by oh. Hiromi Kawakami. What's the cover look like? Uh, it's got little like so. It's a small kind of um doll house looking mm. like it like from a japanese neighborhood essentially and it's got these little they look like play-doh people outside yeah um it's got very very pastel colors it looks quite um it's either quite charming or quaint there's a curiosity to it something clearly lying underneath there's there's a lot of um it's quite haunting, quite isolated, and yet there are multiple figures on the screen. Have, have you have you on read the screen? Book? On the screen, I've read most of the book, and then I stopped reading because it didn't like it very much. Yeah, okay, you, you, <laughs> but... you DNF'd it, as kids would say. Yeah, okay. I mean, mm. I feel like this is the first time, by the way, that we've discussed books on playing favorites. Like, unless you're counting letters of the alphabet, like this is the I've I've made that very intentional. Well, because I know you you hate books. I hate books. Do you want to talk about that? Do you want to talk about your your storied history? If you'll pardon the pun. Well, I, I studied books. Yeah, and that's about where it begins and ends. Well, no, because <laughs> the way you've explained it to me is that you you did English an English literature degree. You have an English literature degree. You're a I, yeah, I did. I succeeded. The Bachelor in of the Arts. Degree. You did. Yep. And I have a BA. You do, and you you. But the thing is that the problem with that is it's come at great cost since well, basically because yeah, you have to read like a hundred books. Yeah, and they force you to read a those year. hundred books mm. a year, and now you hate reading. I like it again now. Oh, really? Um, I like reading, but books are hard. Yeah. Um, I prefer like short stories primarily, uh, which is one of the reasons why I got this book because it's actually a collection of short stories. Oh, nice. Um, that makes sense. I suppose that's a good way to it's okay to get back into it and to get back into into reading. Mm. That makes sense. But the thing, books is, are good. I, I would generally agree. I'd struggle with, with reading because um, I'm just a fucking idiot. Like, I just can't sit I down think, and concentrate for long enough. Yeah. Um, that, but, that's kind of what gets me. It's weird, though, because it, like, if it's on a computer screen, oh, I can do it. Well, you read if books on a, the computer? No. No, I don't usually. I, I, oh. I read a book. But I don't know. It's weird, right? No, because think about, like, the fact that you would read, like, a really long Reddit post. 
you know, even then, I think sometimes I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's it too long. If it's a, if it's like, a today, I fucked up, and it's got the long t- like tag yeah, flare. Yeah, I get I'm like, that. Ooh, you know. But sometimes, if I'm in the mood, you know, I'll I'll mm. sit down and I'll I'll yeah. give it a read. But like making me sit down and read a book, woof. True. That's going to be tricky. I wonder what it is that does that. Is it because with the book you can like you're holding a physical thing, you can feel its weight and how long it is and how much mass there is here and how many pap- like pages and I mean and it, it feels uh, like oh I'm making be, yeah. barely we've made a dent in this, you know, versus like a Reddit post or something ethereal. Maybe that's why a Kindle would. Help. I I think part of it is that like it's really easy to look away from your screen for a bit and do something else, mm. but when you like. To stop reading, you have to physically put down a book. <laughs> well, it's just the like, physical oh, nature of it that hinders you. I don't know. I, I mean, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, like, um, are, you, are you reading anything currently? So, well, okay. So, oh, my God. I've, I've led into a bit. When I bought this book that I have here, yeah, I bought two other books Ooh, that okay. I have not started reading yet, but okay. I do have them, and I would like to read them at some point. Yeah. One is called... Well, <laughs> let's do a judge. Harry. Okay. Which, which, right, so this one's called People from My Neighborhood. Okay. Uh, and then we also have In the Miso Soup. Ooh. And we also have Little Eyes. Okay. One of those is a TikTok sound. I really want some miso I want, soup. <laughs> I really want some miso soup. <gasps> oh my god, oh my miso god. soup. Miso soup. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. I think they're both, um, I think all three are middling tiles. I think um, that's fair. Yeah, I think agree. the miso soup one is my favourite because it's a little bit, a little bit interesting. There's a, there's a lot of little factors over the over the years I've come across that like determine what I think is a good title. How do you feel about them? Well, the titles. Yeah. Yeah, they're all interesting at the very least. Mm. I think that they they don't reveal very much about what's going on in the text. People in my neighbourhood, however, is literally about people in my from their neighbourhood, not a real oh. neighbourhood, but not from your neighbourhood. No. Okay. Well, because I suppose that's the thing with the book title, right? It's like, how much is it supposed to give away? Because, mm. you know, and you'll, and you'll see maybe this is something that gets discussed later on, hint, hint. Um, but, like, is it... I, I quite like a mysterious title over, a, over, like, a factual one. I think the titles of fiction are mm. usually... Oh, sorry, of non-fiction are usually quite bland and interesting to the point where, well, yeah, like, autobiographies... Like- I have a few autobiographies. They have to, like arbitrarily come up with some like slightly fun title otherwise it would just be you know yeah. the autobiography of Bear Grylls and even then <laughs> they don't even come up with Ooh. something great like yeah. you know I've, I've got the the autobiography of Bernard Cribbins and it's called Bernard Who okay Bear Grylls autobiography one of his is called Mud, uh, Mud Sweat and Tears it's like wow yeah. genius yeah. you know it's Fair like it's, they feel very uninspired or you know Michael Caine blowing the bloody doors off. That's a, a line from. That's um, just a line from a movie he was in. Yeah, it's not, it's not great. Whereas with fiction, because you have the creative liberty in the writing, you can broaden that to the the title itself and and come mm. up with something crazy or intriguing or um, yeah, that comes up in the book. You get to make it up. It can be anything. Yeah, I mean, do you do you like word titles that are things in the book? Yes, I do. I like it when yeah. um, there's a moment. Where you either get the title mentioned for you the get first to time. Point or... to the title. My my favorite example of this, I was recently reading um, 1984 by George Orwell. That shut your mouth. And uh, like at one point, sort of you know, a few pages into the first chapter, he's just bought this diary which he isn't allowed to have. He's about to start a diary which he definitely isn't allowed to do. He sits down. It's given time. He picks up the pen. He's shaking. He's nervous, and he writes April fourth, 1984. And that's mm. that's where it comes up for the first time, and it's fucking it's a great moment because it is you know 1984 already because the title is is telling you that this is a, an important piece of information it's, it's giving you this one thing just by looking at the book 1984 and there it is popping up in the book for the first time and it makes <laughs> it's it the year that the book is yeah set. and granted but it, is it but because oh, they alter history but like you know it's it's fun to see it pop up because the title is all you have to work mm. with when you when you first start out reading and maybe a bit of info from the blurb so to see it come up or to see it be relevant or to see it come to fruition i think it's, it's yeah. fun it's a nice little you know sort of moment where it's like, oh okay it makes sense a book that i actually really like mm. uh called before the coffee gets cold at least I ah, think yes. that's what it's called yeah we've seen this it's, it's just a good title because I like it because it's a good title individually mm. right yeah. 
Like, it suggests something. It suggests what it might be about. Yeah. Right? Okay. Like, there's a lot that you could read from before the coffee gets cold. And yeah. then, like, some, with the, uh, the cover of the book as well is these two chairs sat across from each other. Mm. And it's like, okay, yeah, I kind of get the idea of this book, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, that you know, it, it is also a concept within the book itself where, like, it's about time travel and stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I don't want to spoil it. It's good. Yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, like, I, I do – I don't hate when the title comes up in a book. Um, but then sometimes it's like, come on, bro. You could have given it, like, an interesting title. <laughs> What's the thing? I feel like there are so many – just dead titles that do no like mm. so before the coffee gets called yeah it's it's being included it's a part of you know the situation what's going on in the book it's relevant whereas like mm-hmm. sometimes you just get a title that's just got nothing going on there's a book Go called on, there's a book called the outsiders yeah oh, that's bad. i hate that's uh, let me let me name. tell you luke this is my golden rule i hate okay. titles that start with the the yeah okay well there are exceptions the lord of the rings Fine, you know, okay, sure. Um, or uh, titles and in the middle, something and something, and then mm-hmm. what about the Sonic the, some- the Hedgehog and Knuckles? <laughs> Terrible, worst book I've ever read. <laughs> no, but um, you know, sometimes you'll get a combination: the something and the something. Or, you know... Mm, I get that. The what? line, the witch in the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, like... It's, I'm you know, just trying to come up with ones that are true uh, colours. Very, very famous. Yeah, and you do get your, your exception. Of course, it's not going to be a hard and fast rule. Um, and, and also, you run into this problem where sometimes a book is famous, and because it's well-known, uh, it can get away with it, because it's an established title. Mm. The Handmaid's Tale. Very famous book. That's a good title, Is though. it? Is it? Yeah. What, what, why is that? I don't know. It's it's good. It's just like it's very descriptive, but then it's also because I, I I think I mean I'm not sure if this is intentional, but I think it's riffing off of um the uh, Chaucer like tales, like mm. the the wife of Bath and and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And but- like they all have their own tale as well, like the wife of Bath's tale. Um, yeah. I think it's riffing. So you know, I as a a a student of literature understand the. Uh, oh, okay. Oh my God! Sorry, he's pro- whipping out the the BA. Yeah, I mean, you know, look. Sometimes we have guest experts. Not today. We've got. Luke. I am the expert. We're stuck in here with him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can't believe that you like the title 1984 though. Yeah, I do. Because, uh, and I think honestly, I may be susceptible to what I was just talking about here. It's a it's a famous established book. Um, I've heard the title. You know, for. You know, years at this point, yeah. and and so I, I'm familiar with it. You know, same with you, you were coming up with you know the Lord of the Rings and things like that. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if people didn't know what the Lord well, of the Rings I hate was, to tell you this. Go it's on. not called the Lord of the Rings, isn't it? No. What's it called? That's the series name. Oh, okay. Well, they have in. Oh, yeah, they have awful, awful individual titles as well. The Fellowship of the Ring. That's a good name. <laughs> the blank of the blank. Like it's just sure. so yeah, formulaic. Sure. Every name is bad when no. you just turn it into template words. No, 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 no. Because there, there, there's there's good, interesting titles that exist out there. You just only want every book to be have some like abstract name. You don't want any those in there. So if, no, the, that, the, the, the bl- awful. Terrible, honestly, yeah. Trash. When it when it is literally, you know, you've seen. I'm sure you've seen them for some stuff like video games. You know, when people come like you know, Titan Watch, Titan Fall, Titan Blood. And they just you know come up with like using the same words. Yeah, over those and over are again. bad names. Like yeah, I, exactly. I don't. So when disagree. you're reusing the same formula, it's something you, of something you, you, or you, you, you this and this. The. Yeah, they keep you know, and it will be like uh, you know, s- stars and blood. To be or, fair, like, I. I think a lot of that, the reason that you feel this way, yeah. is probably because the Lord of the Rings as a title, right, yeah. yeah, is incredibly famous, okay? Yes. And m- much fantasy work after the fact mm. has kind of taken homage to the- those kind of titles, right? Okay. Yeah. Where, like, you know, we've got The Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, my, my book's going to be called, you know, The Warrior of the Forest. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 like, sure, that's that's going to happen, yeah, when, when something is, mm. is, is, you know, genre-defining or, or something like that. But it's not difficult to do something different. Even something as simple as, like, Of Mice and Men. At least you're mixing up the formula with yeah, of. there's no the in there. Yeah, it's it's you know starting with of, and then the noun, the subjects are later on in the sentence as opposed to right at the beginning. I 
the thing about Of Mice and Men is it's a good title because it's a reference to um, the, the best laid uh, plans of best laid plans of mice and men. They often go awry, and that's a good that's a good Very way good to uh, you know. I like that. I like yeah. the reference to famous things. Yes. No. Yeah. Me too. That's that's um, fun when it's an extra layer underneath. Um, I no, I agree. How would okay? Let's let's go with how would you rename Lord of the Rings? Have you ever watched Lord of the Rings? I've seen the first one and the first Hobbit. Okay, okay let's. Okay, we can work with this. But, um, <laughs> but then, like, I don't like Lord of the Rings, so I would give it a boring title. Like, I would, I would, uh, it you would, would be, call it Lord of the Rings. I'd, I'd be like, dudes on a quest. Like, it would be like, <laughs> it would be like, um, hobbits on. On a journey. I would probably call it Hobbit The Fellowship journey. of the Ring if I were to uh, rename the first one. It's just so evocative of what it's about. Because the the priority of the first volume is like the collection of these individuals. as Because that's what it's about. It's about the bindings between each and every one of them that invoke them to go on this journey together. Okay. It's about the fellowship of the yes, ring. I, I will, I it's will such give a you powerful that. choice of word. I, I fellowship. Will, I will give you that like, it is accurate, sure. But like, can we not do something just a little bit it's more interesting? So, it's evocative. It, is it, it gets though? the blood pumping. Okay. Yeah, because it's not... like It could be called, you know, the guys who go to Mordor. Speaking of, I hate things that are... <laughs> Use words from their own text that are oh, like yeah. it, not understood unless, oh. like you know. Okay. Like yeah. If, if it was about like if it was called like the journey to Mordor. Yeah, it's like what is know? that? Like I don't know what this means. Does that not generate intrigue? You know. No, because like, I have no idea what, what Mordor is. What about if that thing is spilled into pop culture? So for example, the, uh, the day of the Triffids. You know, people. Mm-hmm. Do you think no, that's, that's, a tri- a, that's a fair point? Like it no, because I think over. Triffid. Triffid is a, a word that exists because of the book. Like uh, the word Triffid I mean, is in yeah. the dictionary. You're uh, right. It's just a weird thing, though, right? Because I think maybe this is this is another case where like the the thing that it is based off is so hmm. known at this point that I can't separate my own knowledge from it. But like Triffid to me, like if you said like I don't know Day of the Triffids, and I didn't know yeah. what that was, I would probably still think it was like a you know, a scary guy. But yeah, it's weird. It's difficult because you end up in this bias of like, you know, I, I'm feeling it like pulling me in like a black hole. That like, I've read Day of the Triffids. I love Day of the Triffids, and it's a very mm. famous book that a lot of people will be aware of. Therefore, yeah. like, can you really stack it up against like one off the shelf in Waterstones that fewer people will be familiar with, that yeah. fewer people will have heard of, that you've never heard of before? You know, titles are so powerful because often that's all you'll know about a book. Yeah, you know, I know far more titles than I do anything else about any books. So yeah, it's, that's it's, it's I would agree with that. Yes, I've actually, funnily enough, I've just pulled up a, a, a Goodreads list of best book titles. Have you looked at mm-hmm. this list? I've not. Let's do not. Look. Do not. Do okay. not. Do not. Because number wow. one is my favorite book title. Oh my god, that's fucking. Funny. So I am the most vindicated man on the planet Earth. What do you mean vindicated? I am the most pro- You know, like I have. You, my my favorite is correct. Well, you know, I have the weight of the people behind me already. Whether you know, when I inevitably lose the Twitter poll, like I have this to back me up. As the, mm-hmm. I I am I have gone with completely incidentally the number one off of Goodreads best book title. So number two is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. How do you feel about that as a title? That's fair, yeah. I get that. I like that. Because the thing about The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is that it's it's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible commentary. Incredible. What you know I didn't know what to say. Like, it's, it, it's not My really God. descriptive because it's not a guide to the galaxy. Yeah, but... It, but- it, it, you know... It's about kind of the... Well... It's about the hitchhiking. It's, it's about, kind of like, doing what you were saying a moment ago. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a book in the book. Like, it's a book that exists in the universe of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, that was published and there's, you know, there's like multiple editions of it, I think. Always um, I don't know. I actually hate the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I couldn't finish it. I think it's not very Jesus. good. Jesus. Um, wow. That's, everyone, you can't say that on this podcast. <laughs> everyone else would love to like it. I just, it, yeah. It, it, what didn't you like about it? it? It's sci-fi being done where it's not clever or thoughtful. It's just we're going to do silly names for everything. Like we're just going to, you know, yeah, it's it's what you know, but it's called the flugulator. 
well, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, it's shallow. It's not, yeah, it's not so What I, do you mean it's shallow? Maybe I didn't get far enough. I got a couple of chapters in, I think. But like, you know, you end up with like um, the president of some world who's jet skiing around and his name is Flugeldorf. What? Like, you know, let, let's do sci-fi where it's like we're taking interesting ideas. I'm sorry, that we can apply I'm to taking... Applications yeah, for a right. new he's co-host. Do, he's doing that um, bit. Okay, fine. Have you read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No. See, and so what leg do you have to stand on? I've watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I need to watch the movie then. Maybe it's that'll just help me. universally the well I book. I'm just surprised. It's controversial. I know. And I, 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 love I think you saying it was shallow is almost the exact opposite of everything I've ever heard about. Yeah, it. and so maybe you know I didn't get far enough in, or it's one of those slow burners or something like that. Fair enough. But it's, um, it's funny though. It is meant to be a comedy. You, I didn't you do laugh. Know that, right? I didn't ever find it entertaining. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. Because it's also it's it's a little bit it's older. It's you know it was defining it for sci-fi, kind of which means it doesn't have the character development that sci-fi of, as a genre has had. Um, mm. You know, I, it, it it wasn't for me. But we're not talking about favorite book. We're talking about the title, and the title, to be fair, it is decent enough, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just to pull out, like you know, we don't want to make this the list podcast, but like I quite like um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. <laughs> It's a, good, <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good title. It is a good one. And and here's a good, you, you do notice this with some classic books. What I was saying about doing something slightly interesting with the title. To Kill a Mockingbird is, I think, mm-hmm. a good title because it's That's it's a, seriously yeah. signified. It's relevant to the book, and it's not just using you know um, you know and and the. It's 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 it's, yeah, it's referring to it in the sort of infinitive sense of to kill a mockingbird. I think it's good. You can have do, that one. Do you do you have any other title? You know, this is just me reading through a list. Like, do you have any any you know qualifiers or things like the the rule or the something and something rule do you have things that you look for in a good title i i wouldn't be willing to put such hard rules on the, on these things because like what about the call of cthulhu it's a it's, good it's book got, it's, got, it's got a made-up thing in it weren't you just saying you didn't it like does that? it yeah shut up all right okay <laughs> why okay. did i say i wouldn't want to put any hard fast rules on it yeah fair enough um the call of cthulhu is a good title because i'm like what the heck is that yeah, okay. I feel drawn to it. How do I even say that word? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bunch of like silent H's in it. I don't it's understand. It, it's got two vowels in it. But what's going and on? HB Lovecraft hated the Welsh. Wait, did, was this last episode of the podcast? No, no, no. no. This is a Halloween episode, I think. So oh, okay. Yeah, HP uh, Lovecraft hitting the walls. Yeah, well, I suppose also it's giving something away. Cthulhu sounds very mystical, and so that informs yeah. you about, um, you know, whereas if it's, you know, Journey to Esselroth. What, what does Most that mean? of HP Lovecraft's titles are Awful. the blank of the blank. Yep. The blank. The, sh- the shadow over Innsmouth, the shadow yep. out of time, at the mountains of madness. Yeah. So this is fine. <laughs> he, he, you know, he. He definitely had a template. The cats um, of Ulthar, the alchemist. <laughs> this don't he has talk one about called cats and H.P. Lovecraft in the same sentence. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, the, he in fact he even has one called the Outsider, which is very funny. Yep. So you know, but then again, he has his moments. Necronomicon is quite a cool word. So I'll give him that. Yeah, I, I would give him. I would give him Necronomicon as a cool word. Yeah. No. So I don't know. I find I find that interesting. Tell you what, though, Luke. How about this? Right. How about a, a unique, uh, never before done segment of playing favorites? Okay. Oh my god! A I, nameless segment. Yeah. That I ahead. warned you about slightly beforehand. You did. I already know what this secret segment is, but I won't reveal that. Yeah. Fact. So what I did earlier today, a few hours ago, I went out into Nottingham and I went to a selection of bookshops. And I actually spoke to and did brief interviews with uh, some of the real staff members people. there, with real people on the street that I recorded on my phone. The quality's not very good. And I just I asked them, I said, you know, I'm doing a podcast. It's okay, it's, we it's- can re-record it using our mics, but I'll do the... You just the play voice. the other person. <laughs> Hello there. I work at Waterstones. Um, thank you, Luke. Yeah, no, I am... Um, well, Waterstones is the, is the first place that I went to. I spoke to two um, ladies in there who were very nice, and it was the first one I did. I was a little bit apprehensive, and um, well, this is what they had to say. I can run a podcast all about favourites, okay. and I was just curious. We're doing an episode on favourite book title. Okay. And I was just wondering if you guys had a favourite book title. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's difficult to say. I mean, like, there's, re- so, you, there's a lot there's of them. So many is from. the problem at the moment. Probably Breath by James Nestor. Breath. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's just like a one word. Simple yeah. title. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. What about yeah. what about yourself? You've been given some time to think. 
pressure. There's a lot of pressure. Are you reading? Any, are you reading any books right now? Yeah. What? What are some of those titles? If we were villains. If we were That's villains. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of that title? Oh yeah, because it, it goes into the subtitle as well. Oh um, okay. Friends become enemies, then something else. Friends become enemies. The rest of it now. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, it, is there anything that, that you guys like in, in a good title of a book that you think... So the podcast is about the title of the book. So it's about uh, favourite book titles, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought you meant like a favourite title. Um, oh, no. Just it, like, yeah. uh, in general. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I really don't know. Um, that's a much harder ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, do you, you said you said breath a moment breath ago. Is, like, I thought you meant like as in a favourite book I've read recently. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, um, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very simple, it gets to the point. Yeah, I suppose. So. Well, I don't, I don't know saying that, because how much is a title supposed to give away? Because mm. just from breath, I couldn't really guess. It is about kind of breathing. It, my God, who'd yeah, have thought? <laughs> groundbreaking stuff. Yeah, but okay. it just keeps it simple. You know, they'd rather than yeah. trying to make a pun out of it or something, they've just kept yeah, it as simple as the act itself. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank yeah. you so much. So any thoughts on that, Luke? Any thoughts? So they mentioned um, two books there, I think it was, uh, Breath and If We Were Villains. So I don't know these people. No, they, neither do I. Uh, they I probably stones. have met them. Yeah, I go to Waterstones semi regularly. Oh, so, okay, you know. maybe you've been served by them. Now, breath is a pretty bad title, bad. right? Uh, however, they yeah, did okay. they did sort of misunderstand the question. I don't think that is obviously their favourite title because mm-hmm. of the the nature of the miscommunication. Yeah, clearly, they uh, clearly they, they misunderstood that one. Yeah, breath is so bad, in fact, <laughs> that like you would really have to clarify what book you were talking about if yeah. ever you were like, "Oh, what are you reading currently?" Oh, breath. <laughs> what, what do you uh, mean breath huh um... no it's a book called breath yeah no that, okay. that, that one isn't a good one no I, I would agree there whereas I think that what well, their, their, their co-worker the answer they gave if we were villains um, obviously that's you know, a was, pretty good title that's a good title I, I've heard of that book before and like I would say that's a that's a strong one that's a strong answer. I like If We Were Villains as a title. Um, the second place I went to was around the corner and very difficult to find. It's down like a little alleyway. It's a place called Five Leaves um, Bookstore, um, which I had to like, go down the yeah, like, weird little alleyway to get to. Mm-hmm. And um, this is what they had to say in there. And we're doing an episode about um, favourite book title. Yeah. So my question to you, I suppose, is do you have a favourite book title? Um, favourite book title? Yeah. yeah. Anything to mind? Um... Obviously, it's a big question with a lot of choice. Uh, well, I can just make one up, can't I? <laughs> I suppose so. Well, a good place to start might be, are you reading any books currently? Yes. And um, what are their titles? I am 150 pages be- before the end on that. Into the, the Books of Jacob. The Books of Jacob. The Books of Jacob. What's yeah. that about? Um, Jacob Frank was a false messiah in Poland in the 18th century. Yeah, okay. It's a novel based on him. Oh, okay. Wow. And and so, with the, the subject of the episode being titles, what do you think of the title, The Books of Jacob? It's very descriptive. Well, it's... He was a false messiah, so there's a, a kind of reference to the books of the Bible, and yeah. within the book itself, there's nine sections which are differently titled books within the books of Jacob. Yeah, okay. So, right. that makes sense. But Jacob's a, a biblical name as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that makes yeah. sense. Um, do you think that there is a place for descriptive titles versus more mysterious ones, or...? I don't know. I mean, uh, the, road not, the rodent not taken... Okay, play on words, that's it's, good. It's uh, poetry by, uh, allegedly by cats, and uh, the whole <laughs> the whole book, sir, the whole book is plays on well-known poems, yeah, rewritten as if they're by cats. So the road not taken <laughs> refers to yeah. uh, Robert Frost's uh, poem. Yeah, the, the road not taken. taken. Yeah, that's yeah. Fun. So it's a more more fun, uh, light-hearted title for a more fun sort yeah. of light-hearted book. And most people who are into poetry would yeah. would would think that was a great title mm. or they'd think what was that poem and mm. pick it up and it's sold already yeah, yeah, yeah. so there you go I yeah. suppose yeah. that makes sense um, do you think that, that in, in the same way obviously there's the old adage of uh, don't judge a book by its cover yeah. do you think that perhaps the same wouldn't apply to a title or perhaps would apply to a title I think so um, I mean this is a really good book and Black British Lives Matter and uh, Marcus Ryder we, we did an event with him yeah but but it's it could be seen as quite controversial. Black British lives matter. Mm. Some people have immediately said, well, don't all black lives matter? Yeah, yeah. It's and a clarion call for equality mm. uh, is... I, mean, it's a, it, I think it's a great book. I think it's a, a fairly dull title. And mm. um, and I think that I think it's it's difficult in a political book to... It's a, it's a serious political book. So how do you... 
how do you express that in a way that uh, will draw people in without being bore without being boring? Very I true. Yeah, I suppose the title itself there is making a statement. It's yeah. imperative. It's saying Black British Lives Matter. Yeah. It's saying the stall. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, I just wanted a quick quick mm-hmm. chat about it. Thank you so much. What's your name, sir? Ross. 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 Thank you so much for, uh, from Five Five Leaves Five Bookshop Leaves Bookshop. in Nottingham. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Ross really got into it. He did. He really got into it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, thanks, Ross. I know that was a lovely little chat with Ross. No, I, I enjoyed. I want to go lot. meet Ross now. I know. I it's go... very nice. Yeah, working at Five Leaves um, in Nottingham. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? He gave a couple of examples there, and we yeah, still had a little seems, walk around the shop. He, he like very quickly picked up on the prompt and very mm. quickly had his opinions ready. So Definitely, very good. I, yeah. um, I think yeah, my favorite I mean, like, of the, the four he gave. I quite like uh, the rodent not taken. I think it's very good. It's good. It's clever. Yeah, it did kind of feel like he was subtly dissing you when he said any fan of tr- poetry would pick would find the uh, title. Yeah, okay. very good. And True. I was like, "Yep, yeah, absolutely <laughs> toasted Harry there in the field." You were like, "Oh, I play on words." When he said the road and not taken. You're yeah, like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what else stood out to you about what you had to say. Um. Yeah, they, um, he chose like a. a the set of titles that all of them I, I fully understood like the the reasoning behind it right mm. the books of jacob is is really clever like i like mm. that as a kind of um you know a well it's thematic ties kind, to like yeah right know, like it yeah. it ties into the nature of being a false prophet it's it's yeah. a book masquerading as a religious text right yes, not yeah. the book itself in in but, but the, its yeah, writings the, but the title in the and yeah. and how that represents the uh, kind of uh, the life of this character that's about mm, yeah real yeah. man not character but it's like a real human person who existed yes yeah so I, that was a, that was a really nice little um, little chat to Ross this this final so this one is um, <laughs> well the guy was a little bit more skeptical to begin with okay. Um, it did involve I went and asked a a person behind the counter in Oxfam mm-hmm. um, on Market Street. And he said he sort of very timidly said, uh, "You'll have to ask my manager." And then went over to the manager, and that's who I had a chat with. So, um, oh my god, let's, let's listen to this. Oh, sorry, mate, you're right. I'm just um, asking about. Uh, I do. I co-run a podcast about favourites, and I was just wondering if you guys had a couple of minutes for an interview. Literally, yeah, two, three minutes. A podcast. Yes. Um. There's nothing too horrendous. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. All, all it is is um. Yeah, we we do a, a, a particular. This particular episode is about book titles, and obviously titles. working titles. Yes, so obviously working in Oxfam, you handle a lot of books, you're exposed to a lot of books. Yeah. And so I was just wondering if you had any favourites that come to mind. What single titles? Yeah, just just a, a title of a book that you think is particularly suitable, that that you think is a, a sort of model of a good title. Not really. No? A, a, everybody has different tastes. Very true. Very and true. I could tell you something I love, and mm. the next person would say that is rubbish. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's all—it's a very personal thing. Uh, are you reading any books currently? I'm reading *Severance* by what's her name? *Severance*, you say? *Severance*. Okay. And, and do you think that *Severance*? Um, I, I'm Ling, not Ma. Ling Ma. Ling Ma. Is the author. Ah, okay. And, and do you think that's a think that's a good title? You mean the book? Do you think the title of the, the book? Title of the book itself. Yeah, just on its own. You know, if I was browsing I came, and came across Severance, do you think that does a good job of advertising the it? Book, sort of. Yeah, or, or do you think that it's a, so it's a one-word title? Do you think that that's apt? Or no, because I'm I've been actually puzzling about that one. Why it's called Severance? Oh, okay. I'm halfway through it. Yeah, and there's nothing to. Yeah, so the sort of the meaning behind the title is not being revealed yet. Yeah, okay. It's an interesting book, anyway. Yeah, is it? Something about a plague or about a pandemic. About a pandemic? Yeah. Ah, well, I suppose it's uh, suitable. Yeah. Which is, comes from China and yeah. kill, it's worse than we've got. It actually yeah. kills people. Yeah, okay. No, it's sort of like small group of survivors of that. Yeah, I see. Interesting, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think that a title should be descriptive, ideally, or do you do you like a bit of mystery in a, in a good title? I think it depends on the book. Yeah. Like if I'm reading about economics, I want to know it's about economics. So I don't want them 
playing games with my mind about it. Um, yeah. But perfection, I think. No, I think a bit of mystery is good. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's so a sort, sort of, of draw people in a bit and <laughs> something a bit different. Yeah, that's that's lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, what's your name, sir? I'm Duncan. Duncan from yeah. uh, Oxfam uh, on Market Street. Thank you very much. You're Thank you. You too. Oh my god! <laughs> so that was my chat with Duncan from Oxford Street. We, I'm very thankful he spoke to I've me. I've never been more uncomfortable listening to an <laughs> audio recording. Yeah. I, it genuinely, I thought you might get shot during the <laughs> course of that. I'm thankful he spoke to me. You know, he didn't have to. Deal with, he did sort of carry on packing up the shop, um, yeah. as you may have heard in the recording. Um, you know, so he, he very easily could have said, you know, I'll oh, leave it. But, um, <laughs> He did imply that coronavirus doesn't kill people. Doesn't kill people. He did kind of imply, but I kind of, I assumed that he meant, um, I don't know, I don't know. What they, this only kills people. Yeah, like, you, if you get it, you'll die. It's sort of more plague-like. Um, mm. But, you know, fair enough. Severance is the title of the book he was talking about. Thoughts on that? Uh, bad title. Yeah, yeah bad title. I mean, he, he, he knew it himself. Yeah, he said he didn't know what he was on about, so... Um, you know, I, I suppose it's not right. Even while reading it, it's not doing a good job, I suppose, which is, you know, it's not when it comes to a title, you can't want the opposite, right? Yeah, I don't know, don't know about that one. But, you know, thank you to Duncan. Thanks, Dunk. <laughs> and thank you to, yeah, Ross and the, the two ladies whose names I didn't get in, in Waterstones. Um, that's a, a new little, little segment. What do you think of that, Luke? You enjoy it, listening to... It, uh, it was, it was interesting. Um, I I appreciate the effort that you put in to get these interviews, to <laughs> say the least. That that mm-hmm. would have been for me yeah. physically impossible. Um, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I but, feel like you're uh, choosing your words very carefully. I I don't think it was bad. Let's make it clear. <laughs> I think I really like Ross. Ross yeah. came in with the what a hero. It's clear Ro- Ross appreciated this. Agreed. Duncan, um, on the other hand, Duncan fucking hated you. Yes, <laughs> Duncan could have done with anything other than you yeah, being coming there, in, coming in. You know, twenty minutes before they close. Yeah, you know, I, recorder in hand, ready to, <laughs> ready to have a chat. I liked, th- I like the effort though. It feels like there might be a better way to do this in the future. Maybe, yeah, but it's, it's that the, doesn't it's, involve walking to shops twenty minutes before closing. Maybe, but you know, as an infant stage of a of a growing new segment of a maybe, new of a, a which a, the prenatal segment. Yeah, which you probably won't hear again for another fifteen episodes. But you know. Well, to be fair, it's taken us, what, 35 to do one little interview-based segment? Yeah. So, yeah, get back to us in two years. Okay, well, fantastic. I guess, in that case, shall we move on to hear what the Twitter people had to say? The, the people's Twitter favorites. people, The eh? Twitter, The Twitter kin. The, this one made me laugh, so I'm going to mention it first. Oh, straight in. Uh, okay. Thank wow. you, Abby, for writing in. Yeah, lovely stuff. Uh, Abby responded with, The Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> now, what do you think, Harry? Isn't... Isn't it called the very hungry caterpillar? The very hungry caterpillar is correct. But is there one? Is there a prequel where he's just oh, quite hungry? Shit, when he's just normal hungry. N- normal hungry. Uh, no, it doesn't look like there is. It's this, a- <laughs> this is normal hungry. <laughs> yeah, he is the very hungry caterpillar. Okay, so assuming we're going with so that really, one. you should have said response denied on that one. But- Maybe, but you know, it's a talking point. It's you know, we'll we'll use it. We'll roll. What with do it. you feel about the name the very hungry caterpillar? Oh, for a kid's book, isn't it? Isn't it nice? It's right? so good. Yeah, it's yeah. just such a. What a, we love the very hungry caterpillar. He is very hungry. Yeah, right. What like, is he eating that one? He's a, like an apple. Apple. He eats, <laughs> um, oh, a, a pair of a, pears. A, yeah, a, pear, a cake, a human soul, some pie. I don't. Um, I think, think maybe like one a, of those. Fruit? Was right. Yeah, I don't know if it's a pie or that might be the cake. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, there's a there's... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah. There's, it's a very simple premise, and yeah, I think the the, the title is a nice one. And then he becomes to... a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. So like, that's nice. You know, maybe a message about like you know a positive relationship with food. Is that a part of message? Maybe. Very hungry cat. I don't um... know. Um, but that's that's the moral. We don't care about the contents of the book. We want the title, and yeah, very hungry caterpillar. That's true, yeah. Let's not get into it because the yeah, because like it's um because there's something childish about it. That I'm trying to latch on to. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, to I think with. it's the very part. I yeah. think it changes drastically when you call it the hungry caterpillar. Yeah. The hungry caterpillar could be like a book about 
capitalism. I don't know. The yeah. caterpillar is capitalism. Yeah, or some shit like that. The yeah. very hungry caterpillar. That's different. It's about late stage capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I think. It, oh, I, no, I am looking at the first review. Yeah. Of the very hungry caterpillar that appeared on my page. Okay. This book is a beautiful comment on our endless cycle of communi- consumerism <laughs> and how through neglecting the consumption of unnecessary products and entering a cocoon, we can grow as a person and turn into a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a few. Doubt. Doubt. Yeah. This, book, this book talks about addiction, a really heartbreaking thing no man <laughs> or, nor woman should ever go through. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, it's you got um, it. It's an old one. As well. I, there's a lot of people reviewing The Very Hungry Caterpillar as though it is like a very... Spoilers! This book is not safe for children. <laughs> there's way too much action and suspense, suspense for a mid child to understand. <laughs> oh. Eric, Eric Carl's world-famous children's horror book has been rated <laughs> since it was 1969. These Google reviews are fantastic. The book is about this a caterpillar so addicted to food and eats everything in its path, sparing nothing in its way. Throughout the book, he gets more and more obese as he eats his victims. Oh my oh, god. Jesus. it's That's intense. Yeah, no, I love that, though. That's, um... Yeah, n- nothing, very, nothing bad to say. I cannot deny that, and the title reflects that one. The title is good. Genius. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Okay, go on. Let's let's have another. Fuck it. This one's from Georgia. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. I just I feel like I shouted at you then. Thank, Thank you, Georgia. <laughs> Directly called out. Okay. <laughs> Georgia's got? favorite book title. Yeah. And this one also made me laugh. Okay. It's called How to Cook Husbands. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a good one. I like this. I know nothing about this book. Neither do I. It's by Elizabeth Worthington. Elizabeth Strong Worthington, it says on this cover, but you know that. That's oh my fine. bad, you're right. Gotta get the middle name in there. Oh, uh, and I think I've got. I think I've got. We only have to know about how to cook husbands and nothing else. Am I might <laughs> have to buy uh, this book. I think, okay, I've got something. Here we go. How to Cook Husbands is a classic marriage guide by Elizabeth Strong Worthington. Again, got the strong in there. A great many husbands are spoiled by mismanagement. Some women go about it as if their husbands were bladders and blow them up. What? Others keep them constantly in hot water. Others let them freeze by their carelessness and indifference. Some keep them in a stew. What? Is this a metaphor or not? Some keep them in a stew by irritating ways and words. Others roast them. Some keep them in pickle all their lives. Now it is not to be supposed that any husband will be good managed in this way. Turnips wouldn't, onions wouldn't, cabbage heads wouldn't, and husbands won't, but they really are delicious when properly treated. Oh, so wait, so it's a, so it's non-fiction, it's a marriage guide, and it's like talking about a marriage from a wife's point of view in this sort of like heteronormative setup, and it's like a marriage guide on how to treat your husband as if you were preparing food, you know. It's talking about like, in the same way, you know, you're- Harry. You're, what? Hold on. The thing that you're looking at is not from How to Cook Husbands. What? The thing that you're looking at is not from How to Cook Husbands. What What? what do you mean? The thing that you're looking at... How many times do I have to repeat this? <laughs> what? The thing that you're reading is not from How to Cook Husbands. What? What do you mean? You're reading How to Cook a Husband, which is from the Tried Recipes for Everyday Use, a text from 1911. Uh, there's a Hansen's article about it. What? I'm reading this is off this is off the the Amazon listing for how to cook husbands. Hold on, maybe I'm just wrong. Look, here's a screenshot. I almost put it in our group chat. Hang on. Look. Elizabeth Strong Worthington. It's the name of the author. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you what are you struggling with? What are you what are you You said some guide from nineteen eleven? What? I might just You said about how to cook husbands. I found this. And this is from an article. I think I only heard some of your words, and I just kind of like assume. I think this this summary that I'm reading is is taking from this article yeah. from the past. I think, yeah, I think you might be right. In sections, I think I just had a stroke. Well, great, but none of that matters, Luke. What do you think of the title? It, the title, good. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's evocative. It's definitely yes. one of those ones that's titled in such a way where you're meant to be like, oh, I, I, how dare you? Yeah, puts you in hot Say water, that. if you're pardon the pun. There you go. Yeah, Not exactly. contemporary. Mm, and then you... Damn. Then you That's give it an a Amazon review right there. Not contemporary. <laughs> it's not contemporary. How I remember that. Yeah, no, I am... Um, 
It's an amusing. I'm sorry. Now I'm on the Amazon reviews. It's an amusing and clever take on husbands and men in general. Definitely worth buying. A very fun book to read. Oh yeah, not um, contemporary. Yeah, no, I, I think um, as far as the title goes, yeah, you know, like you said, it, it, it it's saying something, which is good. You, you, why I like the fact you that what are you, what are you no, yeah, sorry, I was just going through Amazon reviews. You again. fed up. I I no no, it's okay. I like the fact that it, the um, the recommended it gives you based off of this book are actual cooking books. Really, I'm I'm seeing um, Milky Trail to Death, a western. I'm seeing a bunch of westerns. Products related to this item. Born to Track, a Western. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. There, there you go. That's, uh, I, I don't know if there's much else to say about that, but yeah, I would agree it's evocative. It says something. <laughs> go on. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I can't. I actually cannot tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, do you want to give us another Twitter <laughs> response? Uh, yeah. Let's go with The Kingdom of Little Wounds from Maria. Thank you, Maria, for writing in. The Kingdom, the Kingdom of, of Little, little Wounds. wounds. I'm glad we both said it just to really means. reiterate the point. Yeah. Yeah. But that I that that's its selling point, right? It's like, I hate to what tell is you this, that? Harry. Go on. It's a the of the blank of blank. Okay, file. true. But that little is doing the same legwork that Very is doing in Hungry Okay, Capital. it's a children's book, is that what you're saying, Harry? No, I'm saying that it's adding a layer. Which is good. Mm. You know, when Maria it, has also mentioned that this is the most fucked up book she's read, and it was in a middle school library. Okay. Oh my god. I mean, it sounds kind of it, twisted. It's, it's banned as well, from what I can understand. Is it a, a frequently burnt book? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> was um, it, is, is it? Is it like a pro Nazi or something? Like what? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um. Apparently, it's commonly banned for being a very adult tale oh, about okay. secret sex and power. Jesus. Sounds intense. Yeah, okay. Sexual violence in a young adult novel called The Kingdom of Little Wounds. Okay. All right. Maybe this shouldn't be in a middle school library. Yeah, well, that's like little kids, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that feels a little, a little well, too not young. not little kids. Well, middle school, that's like up to Medium year kids. six, right? It's like, a, it's like middle. A, like 11 year olds? No. Yeah, right? Middle school doesn't go up to to 11. I'm pretty sure it starts at year seven for us and goes to. No, like no here we year. go. Sixth. So, oh, yeah, okay. Middle school for us is year, so year seven, eight, nine. And then high school starts year 10. Still so, probably a bit too young. Yeah, so you are, so yeah, young, the lower bracket. Definitely on be. the cusp. Yeah. So, um, book itself and content, yeah, maybe not. And, like, the, the title does sound kind of fucked up as well. The Kingdom of Little Yeah, Wounds. I mean... God. Yeah. Sounds a little bit sort of Lovecraftian, doesn't it? So, Death by a Thousand Cuts. Yeah, that's kind of how I was thinking of it. It's, like, it's, it's about, like, a bunch of small shit that happens that kill people. Yeah, Jesus. But I, I think that's good. I think the fact that you can speculate all this just from the title makes it a great title. Because there's so much here to, like think about and chew oh on and God. like it's a kingdom of little so it's not even just called little wounds that on its own i think would be a good title this is, this is a kingdom of of little fucked up shit that happens yeah and like it's yeah it is sort of creating this death by a thousand cuts i'm imagery. reading a summary and it does sound like there's some fucked up shit in this book i started i started reading a summary and thought this doesn't sound like a book i want to read it, the, the first sentence is on the eve of princess sophia's wedding the scandinavian city of i can't pronounce it's that ske- pre- prepares to fate the occasion with a sumptuous display of riches brocade anything uh, set before the year 1984 harry wants no part <laughs> <laughs> well man it's fantasy but um you know that just reading it's not that fantasy summary, i don't think it's in it's- a castle there's a castle. On the, there's a castle on the on the front cover. Castles aren't real. Castles are fantasy. <laughs> what do you mean? They're, I don't. You know. It's. <laughs> oh. You like like Shakespeare and stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't have to be set in a castle. What it's about Richard the Third, your favorite Shakespeare? Like, the, 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 you know, you can you can twist and bend it. When did this become the discussion? Like you you can set content, you can set Shakespeare in any setting. I'm just like. saying castles aren't fantasy. Is that they so are. brave of me? Yes, they are. Castles are not fantasy. Yes, they are. Castles were built. The entirety of fucking Hamlet is set in a castle. Yeah, and, and Shakespeare's old. <laughs> an <laughs> so old, is this old, book? An old almost clearly, equals fantasy. Clearly set in the past. In fantasy, they use swords. Swords are old. Are they or are they not? Swords aren't old, no. Yes, they are. 
What do you mean? When did swords come out? <laughs> like, when were I mean, swords just because something's out? old. My table isn't old. Tables have existed for a long time. Swords were invented in the year 3300 BC. <laughs> it's when were tables invented. Tell me this. You know, fire is <laughs> old. Any book that's got fire in it. Uh-huh. And what's the, what's the most famous spell that wizards do? A, a staple of the fantasy genre? Lightning fireball. bolt. Fireball. I rest my case. Anyway. Lightning bolt. Magic missile. Right, well, I've had enough. I've had, I've had enough of this. Luke, we need to get on to our okay. favourites. That's our what real favourites. The You're real right. favourites that exist. Um, I'm. Go on, then. Uh, yeah. What you want to start with, with me? Yeah. Okay. Well, I almost want to just send you a link to this Goodreads list just so you can read it yourself. Go on, Luke. Mm-hmm. Open this article. What? Is it? Um, do Androids dream of electroid sheep? Electroid. <laughs> <laughs> do What's androids do, do and antrix dream of that electroids do sheep? androids dream of electric sheep is my favorite book title i've yes. never even read it never even read it no. but what what a title right like i wouldn't expect you to it's got robots in it it's fantasy <laughs> uh, robots are sci-fi they were invented recently therefore they're sci-fi sci-fi is fantasy no it isn't what does the word fantasy mean it means fiction and this is science fiction, which is different. <laughs> Look, the anyway, whole point. Do Andrew's Dream of Electric Sheep is a great title. Is it or is it not? It's fine. Ah, oh, it's got a question mark in it. It's a question, and then it's it's taking you know a an idiom, a, a, an adage, you know, do um yeah. of like you know sort of counting um, sheep, counting sheep, and you know, uh, and then applying in using a, a thematic through line from the book, mm-hmm. applying you know androids. And then applying that, do they a dream of electric sheep? Which is silly. That's a silly idea. Electric I sheep. I do like the title. I'm glad. Let me make it clear. Because the thing is, you're right. It, it's to do with, like, it's applying a concept uh, involving kind of, you know, um, robotics and, mm. and artificial intelligence more specifically. Yeah. And asking the question of, like, it's essentially discussing, like, the... The humanity of artificial intelligence, right? Yeah, the, sort of the sapiens. Um, or whether, they, like, do they, you know, because there's, there's many different questions that emerge from the title itself, right? Yeah. I, is it asking, do androids dream of electric sheep? Yeah. Or do they dream of normal sheep? Regular sheep, yeah. Or do, 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 do androids, androids dream? dream? Yeah. Like, and, a... like yeah. And so it, it's all, like, you know... It depends where you place the emphasis and such, and it, it, it is a good it it is a good title. Um, yeah, I always it's... forget that Do Androids Dream of Electro Cheap is Blade Runner. Um, I was just say it's got like a little Blade Runner thing because it is Blade Runner. Really? Yeah. Why? I never even knew. Blade, Blade Runner is based off of this book. Yes. Oh, I thought Blade Runner was its own book. Okay, never mind. Wow. No. Yeah, that's fun. So I like Blade Runner is a fine title. Um, I quite like it, but Blade basically. Runner is a much better film title than Do Androids Dream, Dream of Electric, Electric Sheep. You know, I agree. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep implies like speculative fiction. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. to be fair, Blade Runner is, but Blade Runner is also a movie about Harrison Ford shooting a cool gun. Yeah, I don't, know, I, I don't have much more to say about it than that, but I think because of the conversation, well, yeah, you read. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about the book or the movie. I've read the book, but title alone, <laughs> sick. I love it. I love Do Androids yeah, Dream of Electric fair. Sheep. There you go. How, how how similar is yours? To I mine? in 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 how so? Um, is it a quirky title like this, yeah, or is it, it is. something of it is, it is pretty quirky. Now the only book I, I know, it's quirky. the only book I know you've ever read is the Five okay. People You Meet in Heaven. Is it that? It's not that. No, although okay. that was on the list. Okay, good. Is it a, what a classic book? Is it a you know, a modern classic, is it? Uh, it's a, a post-apocalyptic science fiction short story. The The Martian? We, I know you know the title, because we've joked about it a lot. Oh, God, okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know, short story. I don't know, I have no idea. Go on, hit me with it. It's, I have no mouth, and I must scream. Oh, I didn't know it was a title to a book. I knew it. I knew you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was a, th- a title. I think I knew it was a thing. A thing. Yeah, like um, it was tied to something. What a great answer! Mm-hmm. I have it's, no it's mouth. A, it's, and I'm a it's just a good title. Ain't it just uh, wow, wow? What's it? What is it? What is post-apocalyptic short story? You say? Yeah, it's it's pretty fucked. Okay, um, 
it's about essentially a world uh, post Cold War. Yeah. And during the Cold War, essentially each of the like national superpowers had invented their own artificial intelligence, this super intelligence that was mm. controlling each country at a certain point. And yeah. then th- th- this is all like prologue, right? So one of these uh, artificial intelligence gains sentience yeah. uh, and goes like, I don't want to be a Cold War robot. I'm going to assimilate these other two supercomputers into me to become a global super intelligence and then just destroy humanity. Ah, <laughs> well. And then it does. Yeah. And then 109 years later, which is when the book actually starts, we follow the these four men and this one woman who this artificial intelligence has captured and kept in canti- captivity as the only remaining humans. Yeah. Uh, and just tortures them <laughs> throughout oh, the, the whole book. That's good. Um, it's good. Yeah. And it's not just like, you know, it's it's not about torture. It's about, you know, AI and, and a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so do you think the title is a good job? Yeah, I, I would say so. It, it's about like the helplessness of the situation, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose um, so. Does the AI remove their mouths? I believe at one point that does occur, yes. It or, takes their mouths least- off. Perhaps one, yeah, because it, it, it's essentially implied that, like, the AI has the, the, just, like, total power. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And, like, he, he's made these five people immortal as well, and, like, they just, you know... He's just having a bit of fun. He's yeah, just, literally, um, but, I mean, the, the point is that, like, you know, th- this is just entirely, you know, a the act of a, an unfeeling, uncaring, total mm. power. Yeah. Which, you know could be perhaps metaphorical. <laughs> yeah, perhaps um, could be a bad idea. Also that. Um, yeah, you'd think so. But, but yeah, it's good. That's good, a good one. Good I mean, book, uh, it, good title. It, it's only 27th on the Goodreads It's short list. as well. You could you could read it right now. I yeah, could do it. Bust it out. It's pretty short. But um, yeah, why, why would I bother when it's 27 times worse of a title than Dwayne Electric Sheet? <laughs> sure. it's tw- when it's 26 places further down. Why what bother? else is on this damn good reads list? It's quite good for you. It's quite a the perks of being a wallflower is up there. That's a good one. Just, just like something wicked this way comes. Um, gosh, shut up. A Clockwork Orange. That's a good title. Bad title. What does it mean? I don't know. It's just like a good one. <laughs> the man who mistook his wife for a hat and other s- clinical tales. <laughs> now that that's got me. That is quite good. Um, For whom the bell tolls. <laughs> the earth, my butt, and other big round things. <laughs> That's a good tile. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. So that might, I recommend people check out this list. It, it will be linked in the show notes. There's a lot of um, a lot of good stuff. How to lose friends and alienate people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Very nice. All right. Yeah, very nice. Lovely stuff. Good okay. stuff. Well, I guess we'll, we'll wrap that up there. It's a little bit chat about, about book titles. It's a very frivolous, very playing favourites kind of topic. I uh, hope everyone's enjoyed mm-hmm. listening to us witter on about it. If you want to get in contact with us, we're on Twitter at Play Favourites. Favourites spot with a U, F-A-V-O-U-R-I-T-E-S. And also you can email in uh, playingfavouritespodcast at gmail.com. Whenever we're doing a new episode, we'll tweet out and you can tweet in with your favourite thing in that topic that we're going to do the episode on. And if you want to email in with any suggestions, episode ideas, your favourite book title, a, the title of a book you've written or are writing, a title you once heard in conversation, in, or the title-related mm-hmm. affairs, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you'll you figure it out. It's an email. I had an honourable mention, by the way. Oh, go on, stop it then. It was the Necronomicon. Covered it. Old news. We did, I know. So, good job, everyone. Oh, so I almost, when I was in um, Five Leaves Bookshop earlier today, I did um, almost change to All the Light We Cannot See, which is a very good title oh, about a, a blind title. girl. Yeah, but um, there's, there's my honorable mention. And then that's the end of the okay. podcast. Then we end. So, um, uh, Luke, you got anything to add? I was looking through the list of uh, Goodreads titles, hoping that I would find one um, that would like make a good kind of finishing line. I've got one. Um, I've got a review yeah. for this episode. Mm-hmm. Another bullshit night in Suck City. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you could really call this a confederacy of them? Of, just shut, shut it down. <laughs> 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 it's not recording. Okay. <laughs>